All right, you ready? We're gonna do it right now. Let's get into it, guys. So, spoiler alert, <clears throat> if you are playing Baldur's Gate 3, planning on playing Baldur's Gate 3, and you haven't reached Act 3, and you have not reached the culmination of Asterion's plot line, you're going to want to skip this portion of the podcast because I am going to talk about that plot and its conclusion and what happened yesterday when I concluded it and my gripes with this. Because I'm pretty upset with the way it went down, not because of the consequences of my choices in the game. I'm actually okay with that, all right? My problem is that I was robbed. Yes, you heard that right. DSP was robbed yet again, but this time of something more than grocery bags. And I hate to break it to DSP, but him being robbed was kind of the consequences of his own actions. But I'll let him explain. That way we can get a better understanding of what happened. Okay, to give you a brief summary, because of my choices, a character left my party and gave me all the items in their inventory, except the ones they had directly equipped on their person, which were all unique items you can never get back. These are items that I spent over 120 hours during my playthrough collecting to make the perfect build, and now they're lost completely, erased from existence, okay? Okay, so far sounds like a pretty shitty situation to find yourself in. I can understand why you would be frustrated about this, but DSP, exactly how did you come to find yourself in this situation? Was there a bug that occurred that caused this to happen? Did one of the characters just poof out of existence for no reason whatsoever? So I wanna tell you the story of what happened. I wanna tell you my opinion on it and how I think that Larian could absolutely improve this engine if they actually really wanted to make it truly like a role-playing game rather than a, oh, we just make arbitrary decisions and you live with them game, which is really what this game is, sadly. Um, yeah, I don't think that that's nearly as catchy as role-playing game and will never be picked up by general audiences. But how did you lose your items? You still haven't told me. Get to the point. And then we're going to go from there. But I'm sure everyone's going to have a difference of opinion because people in the chat have already. They were going back and forth this morning about it. Um, so let's do it. Let's talk, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so here's the deal. Asterion is one of your party members who you find right at the beginning of the game. He is a vampire spawn, meaning that in his past, a vampire bit him and made him basically a vampire, but he doesn't have the full powers of like the, the vampire lord. He's just one of the underlings, okay? But because in the plot, he has this illithid uh, parasite in him, he somehow is freed from the control of his master and he's able to walk daylight. So he's a daywalker vampire, okay? So most of the plot, he is your go-to guy when it comes to lockpicking, when it comes to being stealthy. You know, he's the rogue. He's the uh, the guy in the shadows all the time, right? So, you know, you can build him various ways. You can have him backstabbing people, uh, you know, being invisible, or you can have him from range doing crazy ranged uh, attacks and stuff like that. Thanks, DSP, I guess, for pig explaining exactly what a vampire spawn was and how a rogue class works in a D&D game. Very robust. Thank you. All that debt and hand-holding was well worth their time. He learned how a rogue works. That's honestly more information than I thought that DSP would walk away with after this whole BG3 experience, because I only gave it like two or three streams. I thought he was going to wage quit. But let me remind you that we're supposed to be talking about how he got robbed. I have yet to hear any sort of explanation as to what a Starian being a vampire spawn has to do with him being robbed. I've used him in various different ways over the playthrough, okay? <clears throat> Notably, near the end game here, his build is so good that he basically gets like tons of turns. Like he gets three to four turns in one turn and he gets giant critical hit damage. He gets elemental damage. He gets all this extra stuff on top of everything we're doing, you know, that would be a basic, like a basic rogue class. And that's because of the way I built him, but that's also because of his gear, okay? And he's been a critical part of the, my game. He really has 120 hours in. He 100% has always been a part of my party. Unlike everyone else who I've swapped in and out, he has literally been a staple of my party since day one because of his uniqueness. He's the lock picker, right? He's the stealth guy. Well, big ups to Astarian. He sounds like a very robust and meaningful member to our party. How could this ever go poorly for us? It sounds like he's super useful when it comes to gameplay, and it sounds like he's a very interesting and dynamic style character with a lot going on. I hope everything works out for him in the end. And I still have yet to hear what Astarian has to do with DSP being robbed. Um, now, here's the thing about Astarian and his character. He's not a good guy. Over the course of the plot, you find out that he's kind of an underhanded dude. Number one, right at the beginning of the game, he tries to suck your blood when you're asleep at camp without your permission. The hell? Who said you could do that? At least ask, and he doesn't. He just tries to do it, and you catch him in the act. Then over the course of the playthrough, you realize he basically is the one with the worst morals. He is the one who originally wants to use the illithid uh, parasites for using all of their power. Like, he's totally for it. He says, if you're not going to use them, give me all the parasites so that way I can become, like, all-powerful. 
Who would have thought that the sneaky underhanded rogue type that is also a vampire spawn has some questionable morals? I mean, literally impossible to see that coming, you guys. How was he supposed to know, dude? There's nothing he could do. And he says that you uncover this throughout the story as you continue to play, which is definitely true. You get more examples of Astarian's morality being called into question. But when you first meet him, the very first time you have an interaction with him, he tricks you and threatens to kill you if you don't explain exactly what's going on. I don't really know how you needed any more evidence than that the man literally tried to trick and kill you instantly i don't imagine that you would need any more reason to keep him at arm's length threatening to kill you was kind of already enough now basically when you play through the game and you get to know him better you kind of kind of sympathize for the guy because finding out all the crap he's been through in his life being a vampire spawn that he's gone through horrible horrible things he was very mistreated by his master uh Cazador. that's the name of the vampire who turned him and controls him um i mean over the course of the game you've got people who are hunting him because he's a vampire spawn he runs into his former uh, spawn mates, I guess you could call them like brothers and sisters in being turned into spawn and see, you know, you'll learn about their horrible backstory and how they were mistreated and all of that. <clears throat> so you do sympathize him with him somewhat. But I mean, out of all the dialogue choices and everything in the game, he's the evil dude. Like you could tell if you did an evil run playthrough and did all the like harsh choices, he would be in love with you. Like he would absolutely love all your choices because that's what he wants. He doesn't care about people being treated well. He just kind of laughs and snickers at everything and likes when people get hurt. He literally, every time in the game when you make a good decision, it says, Asterion disapproves. And he says all of that like it's a bad thing, like it's a negative to have a character that has differing morals than some of the other characters. Not everybody is going to be a good person, and that's especially true in these role-playing games, where people are supposed to have ulterior motives sometimes. Sorry to tell you, DSP, but not everybody is going to agree with every single decision that you make. Well, I, it's kind of weird, because obviously your first run in an RPG, a lot of people want to do kind of the goody-two-shoes run, and then you'll go back and you'll do the evil run. Well, he's introduced right at the beginning of the game along with all the other party members, and when you make the good choices, all the party members like the choices, just not him. Okay, and that's totally fine, DSP, because some people don't play a goody two-shoes run for their first run. Some people, you know, play it like an RPG and actually make decisions based off of their own rationale and their own thinking, rather than just trying to appease everybody all of the time. I played some of Baldur's Gate 3. I didn't beat it, but I played some of it, and there was many times that Astarian liked some of the decisions that I made, because I wasn't just telling everybody that I would throw myself into harm's way to appease them. Because the reality of the situation is that doesn't make any sense. Why would somebody be constantly throwing their entire party into danger just to make somebody that they don't even know happy to complete some quest that they don't care about and most of the party members are introduced really close to each other so if you meet a starian don't like his character and don't like his moral makeup you can just pick a different party member to use instead of him that's your choice it's not weird at all that they put a character with differing morals at the beginning of the game so that characters can experience it in fact i think it's a great idea because if you are going to do a run where you make at least some evil choices a starian and can be there from the start and be one of your key players. So over the course of the game, if you make moral choices, Asterion dislikes you more and more. And there's a couple critical things you have to do during the game choices, during the plot, that make him change his character a little bit and his attitude towards you. Uh, notably, um, there's this one time where he wants to learn about these runes that were carved into his back by his master. Now think about how fucked up that is. His vampire master literally, with a knife or something, carved stuff into his back, right? And he doesn't know what it is, and a demon shows up and says, I'll tell you what those runes are as long as you do a favor for me. Well, come to find out the favor is an awful favor. He wants you to murder, basically, a creature that's a slave of his. It's, it's another plot line. I don't want to really get into it and spoil it. But basically, again, the moral choices lead you to do things differently. So because you do moral choices, Assyrian's angry with you. Well, I didn't get to learn what the runes on my back are. Now, the funny part about that is you just find out what they are later anyway, easily. It's not like, oh, it's a hard thing. Now you lost out on an opportunity. You're just going to find out in the plot what they are anyway. So it doesn't even matter that he found out earlier or later, he finds out anyway, so there's no reason why he should be so upset with you, but he is anyway, okay? Not only does he not know that as a character, but you didn't know that before it happened, DSP. So the reality of the situation is that you just outright refused to uncover his story. You told him that he couldn't solve a mystery from his own past because you were putting somebody else's life in front of his. So it doesn't matter that you uncover it later anyway, because as far as everybody was concerned, you were just outright telling him no, that it wasn't going to happen forever. And I'm not saying that sparing that person's life was morally wrong. In fact, it was probably the right thing to do. But I can definitely understand why Astarian would be upset about that, because you're telling him that he will possibly never learn about something that is so deeply important to him. It's literally carved into his back. So over a few more choices in the game, you know, he may like or dislike you more, but basically by the time that I got to the end of the game, he's in my party, he's adding all these dialogue options, and by the way, we're doing his, his uh, companion questline, meaning we've gone out of our way 
all right, to basically appease this guy. Even though he's upset with some of the choices we made during the game, we're going to the mansion of the vampire that controls him. We're getting his revenge. We're killing everyone in there that doesn't like him. And now we're going to get to this big boss fight against the vampire. Literally, the only reason you're there is for him. You don't, you're not looking for anything there. There's no items you need. There's no power you're going to get by killing this vampire. You're literally doing this just for him. You can say that there's no items that you need or no power to be gained, but I know for a fact that you're getting XP, and by being in this area and defeating these enemies, you are getting items, so there's profits to be had. Not to mention the myriad of role-playing reasons as to why you might be doing this questline to take down a vampire overlord. But yeah, of course, the character that doesn't live and breathe is supposed to understand all of your personal intentions as a player. He's supposed to know that you're just there for him and that you wouldn't be playing this quest if it wasn't for him. Okay, so he should be appeased. If this were realistic and good writing, he should be like, wow, so the whole party's actually doing this out of the kindness of their own heart to help me? Awesome. Instead, he's a fucking pissy bitch about it. He's demanding the entire time. We absolutely need to not only defeat the vampire lord who controls me, but I want to flip this on its head and I want to have this ritual make me the ultimate powerful vampire. And it's funny because <clears throat> when you get there, you're like, wait, what? Like, how did this become part of the deal? We never even really discussed this in the past. I don't even know why did this become a big deal? It was supposed to be just about freeing him from the grips of his vampire lord, but the game turns it into a quest now to make him the ultimate vampire, which is kind of weird. Again, especially if you're going into this with a moral mindset, you don't want a vampire lord. There already is one. Things are bad. You don't want just another one. And the thing is, again, with Asterion, you've seen through the plot, he is corrupted by power. He's the person that wants to use the illicit's, uh parasites for his own gain while everyone else is apprehensive about it no we don't want to use the power because it's too too dangerous or too evil he's okay with it right then how is it a shock that he wanted to be changed into the vampire overlord when given the chance i didn't make it that far into the game i didn't make it to act three so i'm not really sure if it did come out of nowhere or if there was some sort of foreshadowing that this is something that he wanted to do but given his nature and the fact that he was the only person that wanted to use the parasite's power there really shouldn't have been any shock when he wanted to become a vampire overlord because both of those really just boil down to being more powerful, being a bigger foe to conquer. All I'm saying is I don't think that it's off brand or out of character for Astarian. It actually seems right in line with his norm. So it doesn't make sense if you're going for the moral role-playing story, which I am, to do the, what, what, what he wants, okay? So basically you go through the whole mansion, you get to the end. It's the big boss fight against Casador. And it's a unique boss fight like most of these endgame boss fights. It's not bad at all. I actually was enjoying it. And we get to the very end and we beat Casador, and now Asterion has the critical decision. He wants to become the Vampire Lord. So what does that entail? Well, this ritual has to complete. It means that everyone in this ritual circle is about to die. It means that all of these vampires spawn that supposedly they're saying there's thousands of them that are trapped in the castle are all going to be sacrificed so that he can become the ultimate vampire. Now he's going to control the legions of vampires in Baldur's Gate. And again, as we've already seen in the plot, Asterion sadly can't be trusted with power. He's the one who wants to misuse the illithid power early on, so the track record says, no, this is bad. Even when you're going to make the decision of if you want to go with this or not, Shadowheart speaks up and says, no, you don't want to do that because you're going to sacrifice all these people just for him to get more power. This doesn't make sense. It's kind of like you're, you're getting rid of one dictator to replace it with another dictator, but because you're friends with that dictator, it's okay. No, the, the dictator alone is bad. It doesn't matter who it is. There shouldn't be one, right? He's sitting here and acting as though the choice is just black and white. But it sounds to me like there's quite a bit of things in here that you could view as a positive or a negative. I mean, while you are making Astarian a vampire lord, you are kind of also eradicating a lot of vampires off of the face of the planet. That can be seen as a positive. Also, from my understanding, Astarian can actually be a fairly decent person if you get along with him well enough throughout the story. So if that's the case, I don't think that him being a vampire lord would really be all that bad. And that's before addressing the fact that this isn't supposed to be a pawn for you to play DS. This is supposed to be a character, a character with their own wants and needs. And you've relied on them like a crutch for the entire 120 hours that you've been playing the game so far. You'd think that even though it goes a little against your morals to make them a vampire lord, you would see the benefit that they've added to your party and cut them a little slack and give them something that they've wanted. I mean, you denied allowing him to learn about his own history, so the least you could do is at least let him have a satisfying conclusion. But go ahead, DSP, tell us how you made the moral decision and then the game screwed you over and robbed your stuff because i'm still waiting as to how this is going to relate to being robbed so when all this is going down and even with my other party members warning me against it don't do it i said that's it i'm gonna make my my choice no i'm not gonna allow him to do the ritual okay so by the way it's revealed that the writing on his back from Casador is the ritual marks it's just he was gonna be one of the sacrifices for the ritual and during the ritual you rescue him so again all the things you're doing for this character, right? You went to Baldur's Gate, you went to the mansion, you kicked the vampire's ass, and you saved him from being ritually sacrificed. 
that's not good enough. He still doesn't like you because you don't want to do exactly what he wants. You want to talk about a fucking spoiled brat? That's Asterion. He's fucking such a spoiled brat character. If he doesn't get exactly his way, he hates you. How the fuck does that make any sense? And this is really just the pot calling the kettle black, if I'm being honest with you. It's completely ironic that DSP does not see himself in this at all. When he is honestly a prime example of somebody acting like a spoiled brat just because they didn't get exactly their way all of the time. I mean, this very segment is an example of that. You've done this guy so many favors at this point. You saved his ass early on from vampire hunters. You saved him when his brothers and sisters came to camp and tried to kill everyone in the night. You went there, you stormed the castle, you beat the vampire lord, you free him from his control. Oh, I'll, well, I'm still pissy with you. Well, fuck you then. Like, really, what a badly written, not badly written, but I understand. They're trying to say, again, this guy is a corruptible character who basically, he's kind of incorrigible. No matter how much you like him, he's always going to be that kind of guy, and you got to deal with that, right? So, I made the choice, and I said, no, we are absolutely not going to let you become the Vampire Lord. And then he says, okay, and he turns, and he brutally murders Casador. all right? And then he says, just listen to this. Well, since you made your choice, you wouldn't do what I wanted. I'm going to storm away like a spoiled brat. I didn't get my way, so I'm going to throw a tantrum. Number one... I'm going to leave your party permanently and you never find me again, okay? Number two, and listen to this, I've decided that because I can't get my way, all those prisoners out there, all those imprisoned turns just like me, they're all vampire spawn, oh, they'll never be free. And he takes the staff, that's the, the doors to the cells for the, the prison, and he snaps it on his knee. So now all those people are stuck permanently and can never be freed because he's a spoiled fucking brat. He didn't get his way, so now it's tantrum time. And it's like, wait, what? You didn't gain anything by doing that. You're just an asshole. Yes, that was kind of the entire point. That's what he was looking to gain. He was looking to gain being an asshole directly to you. He was being spiteful because that's what people do in real life, DSP. When you screw people over, they look for ways to screw you back. You picked all of those people's lives over his once, which I guess good on you for. But since you like those people so much that you would piss him off, you can be with them forever, I guess, exactly where they are in those jail cells because you can't get them out. Way to go. I can understand why you might be frustrated about this, but that's the consequences of your actions. And if I'm honest, I'm really happy that that's an interaction that exists in the game because it makes sense. Right? So then he storms away. And I'm like, listen, all right, let me get this. If he's out of my party for good, okay, it's sad because he's been my go-to rogue. He's been my lock picker. He's been my stealth guy. He's been a part of the plot for 120 hours. Yeah, it hurts to lose someone who's a key party member. Like I said, I literally never took Asterion out of my party. He was there from the get-go. He's the only character that I always had in my party, right? So you would think with how long DSP has had him in the party, how useful he's been, and the character that he was supposed to be getting to know along the way, that he would have some sort of leniency and favorability towards Astarian, but that was just not the case. To me, this just screams that DSP views all of these characters that are in his party as pawns that are supposed to follow his every thought, instead of actual characters that he's supposed to be interacting with and having some sort of loyalty to, given that they've been through all of these harrowing adventures together. But I guess we didn't need Baldur's Gate 3 to show us that he does doesn't have any loyalty to people that he holds close. I mean, you could just look at the way that he handled his friend style situation in CT. There was definitely no loyalty to be had back then either. So it sucks to lose him, but I said, I'm gonna live with the consequences of my decisions. I chose the moral path. That's the path that he didn't like. If he doesn't like me and he doesn't wanna be with me anymore. That's fine, leave, okay? <clears throat> so I receive a sack of items in my inventory. It's over a hundred items. I said, oh, this is his inventory. This is what he had sitting in his inventory and they give it to you so that way you don't lose all the inventory items when he leaves the party. Fine. Honestly, I don't even think that you deserved that DSP because given a real life scenario, that person would have just stormed off and stole all of your shit. But it was very robust of Larian to cut you that slack. So big ups for that. So we go back to camp. So what are we going to do? Well, for now, Asterion's gone. Let's just get someone else quick in the party. Let's do another mission. So I did. I put another character in the party. We went and got another mission. We actually recruited another character, which is wild. I recruited a new character 120 hours into the game. I'm thinking that's probably the last one. Um, just a small nitpick, but I do find it irritating that he's being upset about still uncovering new characters and new party members to recruit this late into the game. He just has no appreciation for the amount of content that is actually in this game. The fact that he's still finding new characters, new characters that he can actually recruit is still astonishing this late into the game. Because given how far he's made it, most games by now would have already introduced all of the mechanics, all of the characters, and been a boring slog for the latter, what, quarter of a game? But DSP said himself that he's not looking for a new experience. He's not looking for the game to keep things fresh with new mechanics and new characters. He wants to get comfortable. He wants to do the same thing over and over again and start steamrolling enemies so that he can actually have some sort of fun because that's how he has his fun. So someone says, you know, in this game, the cool thing about it is once you hit level 12, which is the max level, which I hit a while ago, you can respect characters to however you want. 
And so you could essentially make a second Asterian out of this new character, Minsk, who we uh, recruited. And I was like, oh, okay, that's neat. Let's do it then. <clears throat> so we did. We literally went in and built Minsk into the same gloom stalker build that Asterian had. And I was like, well, this is excellent. Let's just have him be the new Minsk. And we'll have a new character to boot and we'll get to learn new lore and everything. This will be neat. So we do all that. And I'm like, well, here's the thing. Half the stuff that Asterian was doing was because of his gear. He had a piece of gear that gave him a first attack every time, every fight, that was a critical hit, giant damage first attack, which is awesome. He had a piece of gear that was the best hand crossbow in the game, doing both force damage and regular damage, and it, it has special properties. He had a, a, a new sword I had just gotten out of the plot. It's a one-handed sword that acts like you're dual wielding. So you can attack with this sword, but get a second free attack, and it does full damage as if you're holding only one sword. It's super duper good. So he's got all of these things. He had, he had the ability to cast a uh, magic missile spell for free, and that's huge because there's situations where you need a guaranteed hit, and he can get it. Damn, it sounds like Astarian is actually a really useful member of your party and somebody that you should have treated better than you did so that they didn't wind up leaving your party or something. It seems like you undervalued the role that he was playing in your adventures and that you should have realized before you decided to piss him off that he was actually super valuable. So I got all this good equipment on him. It's really good equipment. And again, this is rare equipment that once you have it, you have it, but you can never ever reproduce it or get it back if you lose it. It's a one-time deal. It's completely unique equipment, okay? So I'm building Minsk up and I opened the pack that Asterion had given me uh, of all his items and I'm trying to transfer the armor over and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Now I know for a fact he had a piece of equipment that gives him the critical hit. I can't find it. Wait a minute, where are the hand crossbows that I've had him use the whole game? I'm looking, none of it's there. Huh? So the, the, the game programmers at Larian had the foresight to say, well, if we have a character leave, they gotta give you the items from their inventory because they might have a quest item in there, right? And if there's a quest item in their inventory and they leave, you can't complete the quest, you could soft lock the game. And they didn't want that to happen. But they didn't think enough forward to say, oh yeah, by the way, if a person leaves your party, they have equipment on them and they should also give you their equipment, right? But how would I have known that a character leaving my party means that he leaves with unique critical items that I built over the course of the game specifically for his build. And now because those items are gone, I can never use that build ever again. They're not critical items in the sense that they're critical to the plot though, DSP. That's the thing. They're critical to the one build that you've built your entire party around apparently. And how did you actually want them to do that, DSP? You wanted them to have the character stripped down naked right in front of you into their under rooms before handing all of their gear back to you? As if they didn't put in any work to get that gear for the party? As if some of that loot isn't theirs? Like I said, if this were a real realistic situation he would have just ran out and stole all of your shit rather than give you any sort of inventory back so they already did you a favor asking a starian to literally strip down and give you the shirt off his back is far far too much and it's true with this particular build that i made i can never have that kind of combination of t attacks or, or gameplay ever again it's lost all right now here's the thing because some people have been defending this all right and here's the thing again I'm all for having your choices in any game have consequences. There's too many games today where it's the illusion of choice. You make a choice and it didn't really affect anything. This was going to happen no matter what. And it's bullshit. And I don't like games like that. I like games where your choices directly impact the, the results and, and the, the plot and all of that. I really enjoy that. I'm okay with actually having a character who's written to get basically kind of be like a spoiled brat like Asterion is. And that's okay. I'm not arguing with the character. The character's fine. But if I make a moral choice and he's going to leave, all right, I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the game now having a new game mechanic never explained ever throughout the entirety of the game and a game mechanic that they had enough foresight to say, we don't want to soft lock you. So we're going to give you all of his inventory, but then he's going to run away with all the items that he has equipped. It doesn't make sense. Okay. It just doesn't. You might say, well, what's he going to do? Strip naked when he leaves your party? Yeah. Cause here's what should happen. If he says, well, I'm leaving immediately. You should say, hold up. We just went through a 120 hour journey together. And if you're leaving, that's on you. And I give you the option to leave if you want to leave the party. But if you're leaving, you give me all your shit right now. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. DSP views these characters as pawns and not equals in his party that are trying to accomplish the same goal. He's giving Astarian the option to leave his party. Like he needs his approval or something. Astarian is his own character. If he doesn't like you enough, he should just be able to leave the party. Why would he continue to fight alongside somebody that he can't stand? DSP. And how can DSP not see that what he's saying works the exact opposite way? That they just went through 120 hours of gameplay and went on all sorts of adventures. At least some of that loot is a Starians by right, isn't it? At least the very clothes that are on his back he should be allowed to walk away with after everything that he's been through and all this shit that he's put up with from DSP. But DSP is the main character, so you better run your pockets. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, categories. And then there should actually be dialogue between you and the character hashing it out. 
Maybe there's a persuasion check. Maybe there's an intimidation check. And then the option should be either you just let him go scot-free or you have to convince him to give you your items back or you fight him. And if you win, you keep the items, right? That's what should have happened. Not, oh, he decides to leave. He disappears from the fucking game. Literally, he just goes, bloop, he's gone. They wipe him from game's existence. And now you have no option whatsoever to get your shit back. That's bad game design. And you might say, well, your consequences, your actions should have consequences. Yes, if you're going to lose the character, that's the consequence. And give me the extra step of role-playing to have that dialogue so we can now determine what happens because you're choosing to break our, our camaraderie, our fellowship. You're the one doing it, not me. I'm not sending you off. You decided to leave. I'm not choosing to kick you out of the party. I've just treated you like shit every step of the way and finally denied you the conclusion that you were looking for to your story arc. This is a you problem. It had nothing to do with me. Re. Sure, DSP, whatever makes it not your fault at the end of the day, because that's all that matters. And did you hear the way that he was trying to bargain what the consequences should be for his own actions? Like, that's not up to you. That's up to the game. You don't get to decide, yeah, I should lose him, but I should get to keep my stuff though, right? That sounds good? No, jackass. It doesn't sound good at all in the game said so so now you have to deal with it unless you're gonna save scum i bet he got away with that all the time when he was a kid setting up his own consequences that way they weren't too harsh and unjust as far as he saw it perks of being an only child i guess so now we have to hash this out right seriously that's bullshit you don't just get to steal everything right? But he didn't steal everything. He gave you the inventory, which is more than you deserve. And this can all be turned right back around on DSP. DSP, you don't get to steal everything that he has in his inventory and on his body just because you're the main character, I guess. If you are in a relationship and you break up, does one person in the night steal everything in the fucking house and run out the door? No, you have to hash out who keeps what, right? I mean, they absolutely could. There's definitely instances of that happening. In fact, there's probably been instances of that happening and that being the best case scenario for what could have happened. Because that's like ripping the bandaid off. They stole some of your stuff and as long as the shit wasn't too valuable or you could replace it, they're out of your life and they're gone. Good riddance. But now you've got me sat here praying on the divorce arc so you can find out whether or not that's exactly how it works or not. It's bullshit. It shouldn't be like this at all. It's absolutely terrible writing. And Zero says it was his stuff. Wrong. It was the party stuff. It was the party stuff because everything earned that he had equipped on him is the party's property because they earned it together through their fellowship and camaraderie, not him doing it alone. If there was shit on him that he had earned completely by himself, you have the right to leave with it. None of that shit was his. It was everyone's to divvy out as appropriate during their working together. Once you're leaving, now you got to determine what you get to leave with. It's that simple. So there's four party members. That makes 25% of that loot his. Is that 25% not probably all of the equipment that he currently has on his current person? Because I think if there was an argument to be made about which 25% was his, at least the shit that he is always carrying into combat every single time is his. I just don't know how you would formulate an argument to say any other way. If you really want to go with it, you have to dig out the loot that it's everybody's loot the equipment that's on him is his what the hell does he want your magic staff for he doesn't do magic he's not a wizard and that's not exactly a piece of equipment that i think that you would give up anyway if you were able to lose any loot it would be for the character that you're no longer going to have in your party there should have been that extra level of rpg you know gameplay and they didn't instead they copped it out he he literally disappears from the game huh how is that role playing oh i blipped you out of existence bloop what the fuck are you talking about, right? That's terrible gameplay. It is. It's bad writing. It's bad programming. It's bad gameplay. I'm sorry. You're never going to convince me different. They could have done that a million ways better to make it feel more like a real RPG where you're playing the role of your character. You're, I made the moral choice. Now we got to hash it out. If you're going to leave, you don't just disappear from fucking existence and get away scot-free with all my shit. And notice how we just went from saying that that's the party's loot, that that's why they have to divvy it up because everybody worked for it. And then immediately follows it up by saying, you're not allowed to run away with all of my shit. I was robbed because that's my loot. Look, I understand you're actually the main character. You're the player character. You're the one who decides all of the decisions and you're the main focus, of course. But in a good role-playing game, that should not be the case. You should be just another person in the world and everybody should have their own motives. Everybody should have their own character flaws and their own stories. And I I think this is a really fantastic way to show that off not only because it pisses dsp off but because i think that it's genuinely a good way to do it so <clears throat> anyway um all that being said i'm pretty upset i do feel like this is a huge design flaw by larian i think larian could have done way way better with this and now continuing on with the playthrough now i have to decide what am I gonna do next? Because I basically can't have that build in my party ever again. I respect Minsk to kind of be it, but no matter what equipment I put on him, he's never gonna be as good as Asterion was. 
Asterion made got off scot-free with the best equipment. Now, some people are like, well, why don't you reload? Because I don't want to. Then quit complaining about it, DSP. If you're not willing to do the one thing that would solve all of your problems, then just quit talking about it. Move on. There's no point in sitting here and bitch moaning and complaining because you made a bad choice in a video game and you have to live with it. Either save scum or just shut up, dude. The whole point is that I'm living with my decisions. Uh, he should leave. That's fine. If he leaves and he's out of the plot or whatever, you know, and I think he's a baby too. And here's the other thing too, because people are like, well, you should live with the consequences of your decision. Well, actually it's not fair because you're not allowed to. Because my decision was, I don't want him to become the vampire lord, so I don't sacrifice thousands of vampire spawn. Then he breaks the staff on his knee anyway. So now the vampire spawn are already screwed. You basically negated my decision. Basically the decision was either go with Asterion and do what he wants or else get a bad ending. Well, that's not a decision at all. That's a trick. Just because there was a little bit of deceit involved, DSP, does not mean that you didn't make a decision. You absolutely picked one of two options, and just because you picked the one that you didn't like didn't make it not a decision anymore. It is the definition of living with the consequences of your actions. You don't have to like the consequences for it to be true. The fact that there's so many things that you didn't see coming in this storyline is actually really cool. You didn't know how this person was going to react when you made the decision that you decided to make. And that's true about people in real life, too. You're just such a control freak that you can't seem to appreciate that even in a video game everything has to go your way all of the time it always has to be fair to you it really is it's a trick that's bad writing and there's no way to know you're going to get the bad end by making the moral choice especially you know you've been going the whole playthrough like this that's bullshit and so i think what it is a lot of people would have said hey we're just gonna you know we're gonna reload i'm not gonna reload you know it sucks that that's where they went with that writing now the funny part about it is some people have been telling me well you understand that if you had high affinity with Asterion, it wouldn't have gone down like that. If you had high affinity, then you could convince him otherwise, right? Well, guess what? I can't have high affinity because I'm doing a moral choices roleplay. And this is just bullshit. Because in my own gameplay, Astarian is one of my characters that I have the highest affinity with, and I make the majority of the good choices. I'm not going to say that I make all of the good choices, but I definitely make some snarky comments as well, and that's enough to make Astarian rather pleased with you. In fact, he's got a higher affinity for me than other characters that I would actually rather have a higher affinity with, if you know what I'm saying. So not only is it an impossible feat, but honestly, it's one that I found rather easy. The whole playthrough, I've been trying to make the best moral choices, right? There's been a few here or there that are very tenuous. I would say, <clears throat> but for the most part, I'm going with the moral choices, so I'm going to live with that. So apparently, you just can never have a good outcome with Asterion if you're a moral person in this game. That's essentially what they're saying. You would have had to make bad choices that he likes. You would have had to, for example, earlier in the playthrough, you would have had to murder someone for a demon for him to be pleased with you to learn what the runes were cut into his back, even though during the Casador plotline, you find out anyway. So it didn't even matter that he didn't find out early. All that's a moot point, but he hates you for it anyway. Bullshit. It's bad writing. Again, none of that is bad writing, especially when you view it from the character's perspective. All DSP did was treat Astarian like shit, never make any of the moral choices that Astarian would have made, and then completely denied him his entire story arc. That doesn't sound like somebody that you want to continue to go on these adventures with. That doesn't sound like somebody that you wouldn't be trying to screw over. DSP did nothing but ask for this and have this coming to him. And now, just like every other situation that he's ever found himself in in real life, he's going to sit here and play the victim. And I don't like that at all, and they could have done a much, much better job with it, and I'm not going to change my opinion on that i don't like this part of the game the, the whole casador plot line is broken because of it and the game mechanic of someone leaving your party and stealing items because they literally blip out of fucking existence when they leave your party is a terrible terrible way to code the game they could have done a scene where you hash it out and you have these choices in fact wouldn't that have been better okay you're deciding that we have a difference of opinion you need to leave the party all right so now you're gonna have a, a dialogue either a persuasion check an intimidation check a, a deception check something like that to get your inventory back or you mutually agree because you still like the character enough that they could just leave with the inventory or you fight them. And maybe that could be awesome because maybe now they get to use all the shit they learned. Imagine if immediately you have to fight Asterion. He goes, okay, turn one, invisible. Oh, fuck, where is he? And he wants, and he backstabs one of your characters and he's so powerful because he's your party member. He insta kills one of your characters, right? Like, oh shit. Like that would be dope. I think that'd be amazing if you have to actually fight it out with them at the end for them to get their way. But they didn't put that in the game. I guess that was too tough or they just didn't have the, the design choices. They didn't think of it. I think that would have been amazing. I bet you would have thought that it was amazing, DSP, because then you wouldn't have to live with the consequences of pissing off Astarian to the point where he left your party without your permission. This entire segment is just a cope and a seethe about how he would have made a better game where he didn't get robbed if he worked at Larian, and they're stupid because they allowed a character to leave with his stuff. Like, games haven't done that a million times in the past. Like, all those old RPGs that Baldur's Gate 3 is emulating really well didn't do that exact same thing. Yes, it sucks. It's supposed to suck. It's part of the gameplay. It's part of your decision. I feel like I'm just repeating myself at this point, but it stands every single time.
Then you want you want to talk about a game that resonates as like a truly unique experience. That would have been something I've never experienced in a game before, and I would have been like, wow, that would have been ultra awesome to have in the game. But instead, they literally took the easy way out and they blip the character out of the game. Bloop, done. Code line of code removed. Bloop, done. What the fuck is that? That's Larian Studios not giving you a second chance to right your wrongs once you found out exactly what the repercussions were gonna be. And there's nothing wrong with that because sometimes that's just how things have to work out. I cannot express enough how genuinely impressed I am that Larian Studios not only dicked over DSP this hard, but did it in a way that made the game look better for it. In my personal opinion, obviously, some people are not going to agree with that. Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm upset, obviously. I just spent over 20 minutes on this podcast talking about the situation and how upset I am. Right? There you go. Shadow Dancer says, roll a one, no bonuses. I like the fight idea, but bump his stats. Make it a boss fight. Yes, I would love that. Make them a boss. Now you have a cool, epic boss fight to get rid of this character from the story. If you kill them, well, that's why they're on. But if they win, you know, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. I think people would have loved that. No, I would have absolutely loved that. It would have blew me away if that's what happens. I would have never expected that. And I would have been pleasantly surprised. But instead, it's seriously the easy way out. Disappear. <laughs> so lame. I wonder if he would still think that that decision would be cool if when you fought Astarian and you got your gear back, some of it was debuffed or de-leveled because you ruined the gear in the fight. I wonder if he would still be a big fan of the idea or if he would be complaining because there's a new mechanic introduced in the game that isn't anywhere else. And how was he supposed to know it wasn't a decision that he made? Because I think just killing the character and getting all of your stuff back essentially for free is just far too easy. That's a coward's way out. That's you, again, not living with your decisions. Also kind of unsettling when you think about the idea that he gave the example of breaking up with someone and then leaving in the middle of the night with all your stuff, that his first solution is, well, maybe you should just kill him and get all of your stuff back. I'm just saying, there's a reason that we were concerned where Cat was. <laughs> make, then make my own game? Weary Mark, I bought this game. I have the right to criticize it. I played it over 120 hours. I can tell you where there's room for improvement instead of just sucking the balls of Larian Studios' depths, okay? I don't suck balls. I tell you how it is. This is an awful part of the game that should be improved in future installments when they make them. They should make it better, not fuck you over. And the other part about it is people are saying things like, well, if you had known that you were going to lose the inventory, right? Then basically what would have happened is you would have always done the decision to appease the person so they stay with you. You're right. And I think now what you're seeing now, okay, is essentially the problem with this game. How is that a problem with the game, DSP? That's your decision to make everybody happy all of the time. It's not the game's fault that you're prioritizing optimization for your build and your characters over actually playing the game as it was intended to be played, a role-playing game, where your decisions matter and you can pick any decision that you want. You just have to, again, live with the consequences. Because again, as somebody who played, I don't go out of my way to make everybody happy all of the time because sometimes I don't like these characters. I'm not putting up with their shit and whether it's unoptimal or not, I want them gone. But of course, that's my gameplay. DSP's gameplay is always as optimized as possible because he's handheld by the dents and that's the way that he likes it. A morally good run where he's as OP as possible and gets all of the best loot all the time. What a fun way to play every single game. Truly Mr. Variety. Now that you know that if a character leaves you, you lose their inventory, what's gonna happen is for a lot of people, they're just gonna make the whole game about appeasing the party members because they wanna keep them in the party so you have that option of bringing that person in for whatever reason, for the plot, for a fight, for lockpick, whatever. You always want everyone happy with you, right? They're your party members, DSP. They're supposed to be your friends, your comrades, your fellowship, your brothers in arms. You're supposed to want to make them happy because you like them. Now, I'm not saying go out of your way to make every horrible decision that they want you to make simply because you like them, but you should be trying to appease them at least on some scale. But this just continues to further my point that DSP is viewing these other characters as his pawns that are going to do his bidding without any sort of question. Completely missing the point that these are individual characters with their own thoughts and feelings on situations. I don't know why he insists on having these weird in-depth discussions about the game design behind this game because it's very clear he doesn't understand. It. And every single time he does one of these segments, it's only proven more and more. So instead of it being an RPG where you can simulate who you really want to be and make the choices you want, instead it, becall, it becomes, I'm a, a, a pleaser, a yes man, a person who just appeases my party members so they'll never leave and I won't lose all of this work that I put into the game. That's terrible. That is absolutely awful. That's bad writing. That's bad gameplay. That's bad everything. No one should have to play the game walking on fucking eggshells, wondering if they're gonna piss one of their party members off and then they leave and then you're fucked because the game mechanic is they disappear from the universe, right? <clears throat>
But isn't that realistic, DSP? Isn't that what happened to all of your friends in Connecticut? Didn't you treat them like shit? Didn't you not walk on your eggshells? Didn't you not pay them? So they just decided to up and leave your entire life and poof, disappear? Apologies for snapping into the microphone. But sometimes when you say poof, you feel it, you know? So I guess real life has lazy writing as well. If it has the same experience as the game. It's the only logical conclusion. So that's terrible. And it should be improved. Absolutely positively. It should be improved. It's not. All right. I think that's something that, again, whether they patch it in or whether that's something that in a future installment they put into the game, that should be dramatically changed and overhauled. That's one of my major gripes with the game right now. I have a few gripes with it. As you know, I played 120 hours and I had some criticisms of it. This is probably my strongest one right now that you could screw me out of unique gear I worked my ass off to get and to create this build over the course of the, of the playthrough. And now you screw me. Right. I just that is so unacceptable, in my opinion. So. Real talk for a second, what has he actually enjoyed about the game? If you can name one thing that he enjoyed about the game, please tell me in the comments. Because the only positive that I can come up with is that he made enough money while playing the game to justify continuing to play it. That's not exactly a positive of the game though. He doesn't like the characters, he doesn't like the inventory system, he doesn't like the turn-based system, he doesn't like the combat in general, he doesn't like any of the stories. He's upset that he got rabbed, dude. He thinks that all of the side quests are fluff and meaningless. The game's far too long because it's ruining his channel or something. Everything apparently a beginner's trap that requires a second playthrough even though tons of people have done a first playthrough and never complained about it i'm just failing to see where he's ever said a positive about the game anyway um that's my take and you can disagree and i'm sure there's tons of people out there who disagree if you disagree i want to hear your take and i want to hear why you disagree in a valid way not just oh you're wrong and larian's right right uh it's that's ball sucking okay no ball sucking right i don't want to hear ball sucking around here ass kissing you know knob stroking none of that I actually want to hear legit arguments for why you think the way they've handled it is better than my proposed way to handle it, okay? Um, <clears throat> well, if DSP really wants to hear any of that reasoning, he can watch any of the detractor videos that were made on this exact segment. Because most of them came up with the same conclusion, that DSP is just being a moron, and that he doesn't understand the game, and he hates the game for it, and that he doesn't want to live with the consequences of his own actions, just like normal. So, and by the way, here's another thing that people have said. Well, other RPGs do it. What RPG? Name one RPG where a character leaves your party and there's no option to ever get them back and get your gear back. For all my visual style watchers, shout out the redundancy, obviously. If you watch DSP's chat from this moment on, you will see a bunch of different game titles that have this exact mechanic in it. But for all of my audio only style, I'll let them talk for a bit more and then I'll run you down a list of a bunch of the games that they mentioned. Because there really is a host of games that have this exact same mechanic that DSP is talking about and they're old games that he should be familiar with because I'm not aware of it. And by the way, I've played a ridiculous amount of RPGs in my time. I'm literally playing an RPG right now called Like a Dragon Infinite Well. There's two parties. When you switch from the plot from one party to the other, you still have access to the inventory of the other party that you can't play with, okay? I've played many Final Fantasy games where a character will leave with inventory, but later on it comes back or they put the inventory into your party inventory. They don't just remove it magically. It doesn't disappear. The character doesn't blip out of existence. They've already solved this problem many, many times before in other RPGs. So I haven't played some of these games and cannot verify myself whether or not this happened in those games, but the fact that there are so many being listed kind of just goes to prove the point. So far, they've mentioned Fire Emblem, 40K Rogue Trader, Baldur's Gate 2, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy 7, Persona 3, Final Fantasy 2, Dragon Quest 11, and Dragon Age. I know for a fact DSP's played all the Dragon Age games, and I'm fairly certain that it happens in Knights of the Old Republic as well. It's been a while since I played and I wasn't that irritated when it happened, so it's not as memorable, but I want to say that it happens. And that's another game I know DSP played. But just like always, DSP is completely wrong with what he says. But I'm sure that he'll justify him being right in some sort of way. He always does. This RPG chooses to ignore all of those solutions and say, we're doing it our own way, a very annoying, badly designed, archaic way that punishes the player and makes it that now you're afraid of always pissing off a party member because they might steal all your shit. You're allowing these people into your camp, DSP. You're supposed to trust them. You're supposed to build relationships with them. You're not supposed to be just pissing them off because you want to, because it's fun. That's your problem. That's the way that you decided to play. You're given that option and you took it. Now, again, live with the consequences, pimp. That's stupid. Sorry, it just is stupid, okay? Um, and it's funny because now some people are saying, well, what about Final Fantasy Tactics? Oh, Final Fantasy Tactics, a PlayStation 1 game. <clears throat> Excuse me from the 1990s. That's your best counter to what I'm saying in 2024 to over 25 years later. Nothing's advanced since then. Nothing's gotten better. 
<laughs> right? You gotta love that he cherry picked exactly one example that he thought that he could debunk and dunk on instead of addressing all of the other games that people listed that are much more modern. Never change, Phil, never change. How about this? If you want to play Final Fantasy Tactics, go play Final Fantasy Tactics. This is an RPG in the modern day that's supposed to have modernized mechanics that are appeasing and appealing to the player, all right? I'm playing this game because I want to simulate a certain style of moral compass in my main character, and I should be able to live with that, the choices without getting dirty surprises like this, being completely screwed. But that's exactly how that role playing would go, DSP. That's the realistic thing that happens. You think that you're making a good choice, but when the consequences actually get rolled out, when you actually see what happens based off of your actions, it's not what you think all the time. You can't 100% think everything through. Sometimes unforeseen consequences happen. I don't understand how he's not grasping this concept. Like he doesn't live in reality. He lives in a different world completely where every single decision he makes is 100% thought out and foolproof. Because if that's the case, I have to beg the question how he actually wound up in this situation. Was this intentional or were these the unforeseen consequences? How does it make any sense that Asterion had the foresight to say, well, we don't want to soft lock you. So we're going to give you a bag full of all the items that Asterion had in his inventory, but not anything he actually has equipped on his person. That's bullshit. Either it's all or nothing. Not being selective about the shit. That's really stupid, you know? <clears throat> So now he's just spitting in the face of the favor that Larian essentially did for him in giving Astarian's inventory to him instead of just taking the whole thing outright. And at the same time, Mr. Black and White tells us that it's all or nothing, doob. So I guess there's no 50 shades of gray on this one. So, sorry, don't like it, not going to like it. You're not going to change my mind whether trying to yell at me and saying that I'm wrong or, you know, all other RPGs do it this way. It's bad. It's just bad game design, in my opinion. You have the right to disagree, but you're not going to convince me otherwise. Right now, I'm very upset. <clears throat> that I got this far into the game and I can't get my shit back, right? So then why did you ask for people to explain their reasoning on why they thought it wasn't poor game design if you weren't gonna change your mind, if you're hard stuck now? That's just a waste of everybody's time and a way to get you upset for no reason, just so that you can, what, lean in manual ban people? What a productive and meaningful thing to do to your stream chat, DSP. Give them a reason to get leaned in on. So I'm not gonna reload the game. I'm not gonna redo my choice just for the sake of appeasing this spoiled brat character. I'm gonna continue on with the playthrough. It just sucks. I'm not gonna have anyone who basically has that build anymore. And there's really nothing that I can do about it, right? I'm just, I just have to kind of live with it um, and deal with it. And that's okay, but it will leave kind of a gap in my playthrough where I always, you know, the rogue character was great. I loved having them the entire game and now I can't lockpick. I could respect someone to lockpick like Minsk. Maybe we could do that. But Minsk will now not hold a candle to what Asterion was able to do in combat. He doesn't have any of the gear. And I think this is why I'm so impressed with how the game decided to screw over DSP in this matter. Because it didn't just screw him over, it instead screwed him over and then made him engage with the game and rethink his strategy going forward. He can't just write this one off as nothing I could do and bash his head into the wall until he completes his goal. Because his goal is to make a build that he no longer can make because he doesn't have access to that equipment. Like I said, I think what we might do today is first thing we do is go on a shopping trip because some people have recommended, um going to this particular vendor or two and buying a couple like a new bow or something like that. I have no I have no rings for Minsk at all that are any good for a rogue. They were on Asteria and he left with them. I think my boots, everything's bad. Like all the shit I have is pretty bad. <clears throat> so I think I will probably first thing today, go on that shopping trip and try to outfit Minsk. And then we're going to de decide what we do next. Now, what I might do is I might just go rescue Lazelle. And if we rescue Lazelle, maybe she'll become my fourth party member. Then my for combat, my party's going to be ridiculous because Lazelle was also like crazy good in combat. And she hasn't been in my, my game now for many hours. So maybe rescuing her is the way to go. And then I have the most crazy party ever for fighting. Um, And then I guess we just forego the entire rogue idea. We just don't have one in our party anymore, right? And that's a reasonable option, a natural conclusion to come to. If you're not able to make that class again because you don't have the equipment, you're just going to have to use a different person and use a different class. It's just a shame that it took you this long to come to that conclusion. Um, I guess we'll see. But... <clears throat> That's my take on this. I don't like this at all, this game mechanic. I, I, my, I think my proposition of how it should go is much better. <clears throat> and I'd like to hear your opinions on this, okay? All right, I'm officially done with this segment on Baldur's Gate uh, 3, all right? And speaking of having one of the most crazy parties, I did want to take a look at a couple of the comments from the last video. So shout out to all of my members. Dad's Thick Dong says, it cracks me up. He'll stare into the camera and say, it would take someone dedicated to my channel. Like my man, that's you. You're supposed to be the guy dedicated to your channel, not the dense. I just wonder when he's going to come to that realization that he was supposed to be the one that was doing all of the things for the betterment of his channel, not random people for free online. That he was actually supposed to show some sort of initiative. But that day, 
day is probably never coming. Sir Ackenborough says, I find it funny how DSP always accuses people of ridiculing him because he's not doing what Asmongold or others are doing, as if he's not the only person making these overblown comparisons. And the funniest part about it is that he's doing it on purpose. He's comparing himself to these people that he can't even stand next to, because one of the dents is going to fall for the pygnosis and think that that's an equivalent comparison. And that one comparison will be all the justification he needs for why he can't actually work on any of his own content. And Flutterdark says, to Phil, attractive equals sexualized. That's two different things. Two very different things. Well, I would have to agree with you, Flutterdark, but we're what I would imagine is two normal style individuals. We're not talking about a normal style. We're talking about a pig roach style. So maybe in the brain of a pig roach, uh, those two things are synonymous and there's no way to separate them. I'm not sure. I'm kind of out of my element here. But with that, I want to thank everybody for watching the video, especially if you made it this far. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video, but until then, make sure that you check out other detractor channels to dive deeper into that. Snortex. Ah!